now recording. So this is the district advisory board meeting of September 28th, percent of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner. We assume on the webinar ID 824-1448-3355. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation in any public hearing conducted during this meeting shall be by remote means only. So meeting um, is in session. I do not see, so the first item on our agenda is public comment. Um, we had two public comments sent by email. Um, I don't know if all of you had time to read them. One came in quite late. Um, and the other one um, was early on. Um, so I think we can discuss one of the items. Yes, Marilyn. I have a, I spoke with a town councilor and have, a, um, I have a comment that the person made so I can relay it to the group at some point. Okay, you want to do it now as a public comment or? I could do that. Um, so I think the, the, the bottom, the message was, was that they feel that the precincts and present districts should be honored to the extent possible because the 10 councillors have worked hard to represent their districts, hold district meetings and bring their constituents together around important issues. So, you know, I think, I mean, and that's something, I think in Peggy's principles, that was one of the principles as, as much as possible to adhere to the district, current district boundaries when, re, when redistricting. So I, I, think, I think a couple of the scenarios that you had put together sort of mix them up. And I'm not sure how appropriate that would be given the perspective of, of some, in, okay. some individuals. I think we can discuss this more when we are discussing. I think we shouldn't engage in discussions now. Um, okay. It's just a public comment and let's engage. Um, I don't see any attendee. Yes, Tracy coming in. Yeah, I don't see any attendees either. So Tracy Safin joined the meeting. Um, so Tracy, we just started and we were calling for public comment, but there is no okay. attendees. Uh, so we're gonna move to the next item of approving the minutes. So we have two minutes to go over the first one is the September 20, September 14th, and the next one is the September 21st. Um, so let's first go over the September 14th minute. Does anybody have any comment on? Yes, Sue. Um, <clears throat> earlier, uh, Tracy emailed me to point out um, on the section of announcements where um, it's stated under B, the Sioux calculated the cost to the fall, to the town of having 15 precincts compared to 10. And she just said, you know, just double check it. And I'm glad she did because um, payroll and coding where it says yearly next to each one, that's actually per election. Okay, so that's the only change that I have. Everything else looked great. So. For code, it's payroll and coding is per election. Per yeah, all yeah, payroll okay. and coding is per election. The tabulators is a one-time charge, um, which we have to purchase anyway. Um, the election supplies is a one-time charge to get up to fifteen trunks and not having ten. And I think that's it. Those are the four things on there. So the, I wonder if the tabulators belong into this because that's a purchase that even if we were not doing something, it should they have to be, they're stated to be purchased. It's not that it depends on 10 or 15, the tabulators have to be purchased anyhow. No, 
No, um, if we had 15, we'd have to purchase more. Right now we've got a quote out there for the 10 precincts and some extra tabulators, so 14 okay. tabulators. If okay. we had 15 precincts, we'd need additional tabulators. But I think that the point is just that, you know, if we're talking about what are the costs, if we had to do 15 districts, which, is, you know, the town attorney, the town council says we don't. But if we did want to cite that, I don't know if I would count like the full costs of it would be the only the tabulator. The I would, I would, right, I would count like difference and Maybe i had suggested and sue in my email to you i had suggested that maybe we even look at like 10-year costs i mean i think it's good per election but as you know as was pointed out right sometimes some years on the odd years we only have town elections now and on the even years like there's the presidential election years where we have three elections and on the other years the other even years that are state elections then we have two elections and so if we wanted to estimate like over a 10-year period you know, in terms of what are the added costs of 15 precincts. To show the cost like per election, as you just to say, you know, over over a 10 year period, like until the next redistricting, that's a lot of money. It adds up. So okay. Okay. Any uh, other yes, Peggy? Other changes to the minutes? I, yeah, that's I thought, a, great. They were like easy to. Yeah, so okay. I thought, thank you so much for doing such a great. Yeah. You're welcome. Tracy, you're going in and out for my sound a lot. I don't yes. know if it's where your yeah, mic is. Yeah, I, I got this. It actually said that my connection is unstable. I'm in my house at my computer, so I will try to. Nobody else is on any internet, but I'll work on that. Okay. So, uh, Marilyn and Craig, do you have any uh, comments for the minutes? So, if somebody wants to make a motion. Okay. I move that we approve the minutes of September 14th, 2021. I second. Okay. Marilyn Bastlin? Yes. Elena Hovne? Yes. Craig Meadows? Yes. Joseph Gordon? Yes. Peggy Shannon? Yes. Tracy Seffen? Uh, yes. Um, so the minutes are approved. And now we move on to the minutes of September 21st. Any... OK, so I didn't, I didn't see those minutes didn't, I, until did, were they added to the packet today? Yes. yes. Oh, OK. Craig, you have a comment? Uh, I noticed that that um, the suggestion I made at the beginning of the last meeting that we select one map and start working with that and from that, even though that suggestion was ignored, uh, it it wasn't written up in the rules. Okay, do you want to suggest a wording how to include that comment? simply say that I suggested that we pick out one map and try to work with that one map so that we could actually meet the deadline that we have. Okay. Any other comments? I didn't, um, I didn't review the minutes today, I'm sorry. It, I, didn't, I didn't see them earlier. Okay, so do we have a motion to postpone the discussion until the next meeting? Yes, I move to postpone the discussion. Okay, okay. I second that. Okay, Craig Meadows. Aye. Irene, aye. Irene Hovne, aye. Marilyn Blaustein. Aye. Joseph Gordon. Aye. Peggy Shannon. Yes. Tracy Safian. Okay, so the motion to postpone until next meeting passed. Um, I want to ask um, the, the board, how do they feel? Because I saw that there are two attendees that just joined, whether we want, since the meeting, we have public comment at the end, but whether since we moved fast because nobody was present, whether we can, we call for public comment now, just in case somebody- That's has a, a good idea. Comment. I'm open to that, yes. 
Okay. So we're going to be reopen the public comment. And if any of the participants attendees would like to speak, raise your hand. I don't see any hands raised, so um, we can uh, continue with the items on our agenda. Uh, the next uh, item is announcements, and I don't have any announcements. I don't know if any have any. So Sue has one announcement. Anybody else? Okay, Sue. So. Okay, um, just want to let you all know. Last Thursday, uh, my Assistant Town Clerk and I attended a Town Clerk conference at um, Springfield Sheridan, and we signed up for 2022 elections class that was given by Michelle Tassinari, who's our um, you know, head of our legal elections division. And um, she just wanted to, she covered a lot of things, but one of them was that um, she, can, she urged people to continue working on your re-precincting maps because she said, if you submit them and they're approved, even though the state legislature right now hasn't finished drawing their districting lines, when they do, if they happen to cut a town in half, let's say, she said, they're more apt to change their line boundaries if your maps are already, our maps are already approved than to come back at towns and cities and say, you need to change your lines. So yeah, I just wanna encourage you, let's keep going forward and, and get this done. <laughs> um, and also we will be given the meets and bounds descriptions once we've drawn our lines. So that's the legal wording, which um, will come to us for wherever we end up, end up based on our maps. And we have to proofread it and put in some of the, um, some, you know, some things will be left unworded. We'll have to figure that out but for the bulk of it. It's gonna be given to us. So that's, that's great. I guess in 2011, it wasn't done for us. Well, and I'm assuming we can also include maps in the, like the GIS maps, like in our report to the state too, like copies of the maps. Yeah, but we still have to spell out no, I understand, but I'm saying yeah. when I looked at the, I mean, the copy of the 2011 report that we have access to, like, I don't think that they had as much GIS, you know, in terms of, I mean, it seemed, anyway, I don't know, maybe, maybe they were doing a lot because they were able to meet in person. Maybe they were doing a lot with like physical maps and so on. I'm not sure, but. I'm not sure either. But I was thinking, <laughs> I mean, for example, some like um, early on, Mike had produced a map that had um, that had the population density, you know, by census block, and it highlights, you know, in those really dark colors, like the areas that are super dense, and that I thought that that would be a nice addition to put in our map, like both just to visually represent, you know, the information that's in the report. I think the report talks about how there's, you know, four percent of the land area includes like 50% of the population or whatever those numbers are. But even just to show it, it, it is really, it is helpful to have the visual too. I think we can include it on, on, the, on the narrative on the report, a map like that can be included on the narrative of the report. Um, so that's pretty much all I had to say is, um, but Michelle had to give an example of how, what they're looking for at the L LEDRC level. And she said, one town submitted a map that had these long fingers and I'm sitting there going, oh geez. <laughs> and we don't really like to see that. <laughs> we like no, to see nice even blob sections and I'm like, oh gosh, you know, I'm just yeah, sitting there. But I think most towns don't have the nuances yeah. of our population. I mean, right? we, can't, we can't create even blobs, I'm yeah. sorry. And I think and I think she and the state, know, you know, the LEDRC know that. She likes to make jokes. So we were the brunt yeah. of that joke. Yeah. There anyway, that's all. That's all I have to report. OK, great. Thank you. Any other announcements? So uh, did you each of us just joined the meeting? Um, the, we were on announcements. Do you have any announcement? Oh, I have no. one. I forgot. No. Was that right? No, we couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. You all have connected with the MRC Media now. Yeah, that was gonna. I forgot to announce that. 
that Amherst Media was going to be broadcasting our meetings in their in the channel uh, for government. So moving forward, the, the, the meetings have been broadcasted. Okay. I forgot the announcement, I'm sorry. Um, so at least maybe we can get some traction for the last couple of meetings. Tracy? Um, there is somebody who wants to raise their hand. So I don't know if it's too late, but. Um, I think I'll leave it open to the, to the group. I don't see the hand up anymore. Oh, uh, yeah. So Freddie Manning just put up their hand and then put it down. So maybe. Right. Okay. So Freddie Manning, if you want to be recognized for public comment, please raise your hand. OK. So can you bump him? It went down again. But I think I'm... it was intended. Yeah, up again. You want me to put him in the room? Yes. Yes. I okay. think it's trying. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but, but in the beginning it just wasn't wasn't working. I just I just wanted to ask you how to access your maps because I spent half the afternoon and I was able to find some of them and print them out. Some of them disappeared. They're very difficult to, to print out. It's very important to me because I live on Fearing Street and most of your lines go straight down the center of Fearing Street, dividing the street on, on either side. And I'm just very conscious of that and want you to keep that kind of thing in mind when you're talking about this, because what that does is it's splitting the neighborhood. It's a very close neighborhood. And it's a it's a very big change. Okay, thank you. So the maps are all um, in the package. Those are the current maps, the ones that we keep working. Um, we don't have a separate section. Uh, these are all working maps. They are printed in large format after the meeting in the town hall. Um, but during the week, we create new maps for discussion at the meeting. So not every single map is printed in large format. Okay, thank you. If there is um, no other announcement, we should continue with the packet material and accept maps. And I think, I don't know if somebody wants to open the discussion. I think one of the important things is the data that Tracy compiled about voter turnout um, that can help us inform with the precincts. And there's a big discrepancies and a big shift with the years. So again, this talks about how the changes on population go shifting during the years, because I think in the, the early data that you tabulated, all the precincts were more uniform on the voter turnout. At least I, that's how I read it. And as the year passed, some precincts can lose, lose steam. That's how I interpret. And there's a factor of four in some precincts. Uh, Marilyn, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Were those, were those in today's packet? I didn't notice them. Yes. So there are the two first documents, Amherstown elections, November 19, 18, and September 18. And then another document called Amherstown Elections, Voters and Turnout 2012-2017. Um, and I separated those out. So the town clerk's website with the election page, it has like all the 
um, votes, all the number of voters, voter turnout for a large number of elections going back pretty far. Um, what I did though, is I separated them out for like before we had the council and after. So the ones I just went, I think it's like 2012 to 2017. So those are all spring town elections. Those are only town elections, I believe. I don't think there were other elections at those times. And then for the 2018 election and then the 2019 election. Um, so the 2000, the September and November 2018 elections obviously coincide with other elections, state elections as well. Um, and then there's the 2019 election, which I think was mainly like school committee or something. Um, I just wanted to show those trends. I, I mean, and those reflect the districts and the precincts as they currently are, right? So not without any changes, um, but it does show that as I said, and then Sue would get provided as data too on the number of registered voters, right? So I think I estimated that the number of registered voters in District 5 is about 29% of all the registered voters and the number of registered voters in District 3, for example, is about 12% of the registered voters when we would hope that if we have five districts that it would be roughly 20% each. Though it is a little challenging just with the student population because students comprise over 60% of our population, yet there's few as Joseph and the other student on our committee documented last time that students often don't vote in our elections, but even if they are registered to vote in Amherst, they don't typically vote in local elections. And so some, I was thinking about this as I was, as I worked on that other version of the map that I shared, just about in terms of trying to balance it out in terms of actual voters and in terms of people who would be voting, particularly in the local elections, because those are the elections for which the districts really matter, right? If the students, if students on dorms are only voting in the state election, the districts and precincts matter just in terms of where they will vote, but they can also probably vote by mail and so on. And so, and also they move so often. And if we have early voting, like early voting on campus and things like that. So I was really trying to focus on local elections and who would be voting in local elections. I think what's, yeah, I think one of the important issues is that in some precincts to get elected, you need one quarter of the votes or less than um, in other precincts. So it works both ways, as Peggy mentioned it last time, it works both ways. In the precincts where you have less uh, voter turnout, um, each vote has a different uh, value than whenever if you have it, you're in a district where you, your vote is submerged right. in a sea of other voters. So, yeah, I mean, this I is a that was part of it too, right? So District 3, I mean, I've talked to both of the District 3 councillors, but like they both got elected initially to the council with only like four, between 400 and 430 votes. Whereas in District 5, you had to have like well over a thousand votes to get elected, so. I think we have to be careful when we have all the discussions to give too much weight to the town councillors. Um, I think we have to give equal weight to every comment Absolutely. that we have and not just because a town councillor, that's something I wanted to bring up, but just because a town councillor has an opinion is, in this moment, it should be as any other citizen of Amherst and not as a town Absolutely. councillor. Um, I think we have to be careful how to the weight that we give to the town councillors um, because we are here to represent the whole town. Yes, Marlene. And I mean, if you, if you look at a lot of the elections, even the district for the, um, the town council, some of these, three of those elected officials are at large. So it's only, you know, there are five uh -huh, councils, there yeah. are 10 councils who are recommended, who are elected. And, um, you know, I think it's just, it's gonna be a perennial problem. I think we just have to acknowledge the fact that we have a lot of students who, for whatever reason, especially in local elections, choose not to vote. But in any event, they're still, they still should be represented by in their district.
I, I, I agree that it should be represented, but if that's, uh, we could have even one district that is mainly students, but then, um, and that would make it easier to have a more even representation on the other four districts, on the other four districts. If we had, if we were playing around with the boundaries so that we have one district that is mainly students, then we could adjust the boundaries, the, the geometry on the, all the other boundaries of all the other districts. Maybe we could have a more even distribution on year round residents and, and distribute better. But I think from, no, that could be a map that is drawn by the state without knowing yeah. local knowledge, but we have local knowledge and I think we can use the knowledge in the best way to serve the whole town to the government of the whole town. Um, um, that's my, Tracy. Well, I mean, I definitely do. I mean, there have been some candidates who did have appealed a lot to students, you know, and they have gotten votes. I, th I think it's especially challenging, particularly as I brought up before about students in the dorms, just because they are the most likely to move like every single year. And so how do you, I mean, so, I mean, I think it's good for them to be represented. It's just how, how does that happen? Unless, you know, if, unless we do create a district that is predominantly students, but then who is gonna be the elected officials in that district when the students aren't here for that long, a lot of them, so. But it's, oh. something to, it's something to consider, you know. Peggy. And I just wanna reiterate what the public comment, one of the things in the public comment in this packet was the um, pointing out that if you're a candidate, you can't actually get into the residence halls at UMass to um, canvas. So, um, so that makes it particularly difficult to garner support from students if you can't actually get there when you can't even leave flyers, apparently. Yeah. It would be easier if you were actually a student, then you can get something inside. Yes. The <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so we need the students that are staying longer than four years and I'm very committed to local politics. Uh, but uh, Joe, we're looking at you. Joe, are you willing to stay a couple more years? <laughs> a master um stay around didn't joe, <laughs> joe joe didn't you grow up in amherst i did not grow up in amherst oh, okay. but right. i uh, i visited amherst like uh, all the time as a kid there you go okay okay so we need somebody like this but we cannot that's what assure that we would have um this situation so um so yeah, so thanks Tracy for putting all this information. And for me, it was very interesting to see how the, the number of registered voters changed with the years in some precincts half when had to have to, the, in six years, the number of registered voters half in some precincts instead of increase. So that they would say about population changes and shift in demographics in the different precincts. Okay. Um, Just one quick comment. Yeah. So one thing I was thinking this afternoon that I didn't look at, but it would be looking at like based on the current population figures and based on um, the current uh, number of voters in each district that Sue provided as like we could estimate like the percentage of the population in each district who are registered voters, which I didn't calculate, but anyway. <coughs> One thing I was, one thing I had requested to see if we could get, but I think we didn't have time, they didn't have time was whether we could have the registered voters um, linked to the maps that we have. So by census blocks, um, but I think, um, I think Mike was gonna require that data. But I don't think he got it on time to create. I got very close, but I ran out of time. <laughs> okay, so that's I think it was something we should try moving forward if it's possible. If we have any maps, just to verify if whatever map we are making balance out and leave it, or tries to overcome and leave it these issues that were, that were raised by uh, 
at least multiple people uh, I, I talked to, they were uh, particular Sassamers, at least the ones I had Sassamers, um, they were concerned about the difference in getting elected in South Summers versus North Summers. Yeah, I, I, I mapped the data preliminarily, um, Irina, the, the voting, the registered voters from an extract from like a, a week or two ago, I believe from Sue, or maybe even last week. And I'm, I, I, we will map it and we'll share it once it's finalized. Um, I don't know how much it's going to help us um, because I think I don't know enough about the data. I don't know enough about how it's mapped. But for example, on all of UMass campus, there are currently only 26 people registered in Amherst to vote. Active. Active. 26 students on the wow. entire UMass campus. Wow. So according so to the Sue, state- Sue, is that right? Is that, that's correct? It's, only it's, 26? Correct for act, it's correct for active voters. It's, I have to follow a process every year, um, state law with the street list forms and when those come out and when those come back and who go out to and then reaching out to the colleges for their input. Um, so real quick, um, we don't mail census forms to the colleges. We send, we reach out to their um, bursar's office or registrar's office to get a, an extract of, um, or an Excel spreadsheet of all the registered, of all the students. And then we compare that to the voter registration system. And because it's not a census form where a voter has signed it saying that is everything's correct, it's only a listing of information, we cannot update people's voter, uh, their, their street list year, unless it's an exact match. So if somebody has moved, we can't do anything with it. And then what happens is uh, in June or in May, we send out confirmation postcards. If we don't get anything back, then the state requires us to run a mass, mass what's called a mass inactivation of voters. This is all MGL. So every June, if, you, if people have not responded to their census or the confirmation card, they become inactive. This happens every single year with the college students because there's no way for us to update their address. So what happens is by the fall, when they come back in, they don't know where they're gonna be living until what, in August, beginning of September? This is when we've always been done drives and pushes and getting out the word that please re-register to vote if you've moved dormitories. Um, that's the only way they can stay active is if they take care of it themselves. So this has been going on for 16 years. Every year we talk about this and every year we can never come up with a solution because of the timing of MGL and what we're required to do and the timing of when students come in and out. So that is correct. So there's a ton of them on the books, but they're all inactive. So that's just a, we can make this map, we can publish it, we can make it a layer, we can make it an interactive map, we can do a bunch of different things with it, but there are limitations to it. I think it's gonna probably represent, you know, properties out there that are multifamilies and single family homes and off-campus housing. It'll probably represent those areas pretty well in apartment complexes and things, but on campus then, it's going, the numbers are just, they just raise red flags. They just look really weird. So. Uh, um, I have a question, Sue. Do you have similar issues with, I know it's on a smaller scale with Amherst College and Hampshire College? Yes, because we get their, um, we get their spreadsheet. It's the same thing. Uh, not well, actually, I would take that back on Hampshire College. Everybody's registered at 897 West Street. So that we can update. If the students are still there, we can update everybody. But Amherst College, the same thing if they move dorms. So it's room number dorm name. So if they've moved, yeah, we can't. Without their signature, we can't make a voter change. We're not, we're not allowed to. Maybe this is a suggestion to talk to the colleges and say the moment the students register, they have a room assigned, send them a ballot or a voter registration form, a census form. We've done that. We've done that. Yeah, okay. this is a very deep question. Uh, Craig, you have a comment? I, I just want, how many more meetings do we have before we have to turn this in? Yes, two more, and so yes, we should move forward. Yeah, I, I, I mean, this is an interesting conversation, but it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, I, I'd like to make a motion that we choose one map now, and then we spend the rest of the time 
tonight, looking at that one map and making adjustments that we think are viable. Because if we don't get on with this, I'm, I'm so, late. Okay, so the question is, we have eight maps on the, on the table right now. Peggy, you want to make a comment? Uh, I pass. Okay. So, Tracy? I guess that I I think that we should limit the number of maps. I I don't necessarily think that we should only bring. I think that we should recommend one map. You know when it's going to the council, but I think that as the council is reviewing this and as it gets more attention as the council is reviewing it, that people will have a lot of questions, and so I would be most comfortable um, if we bring forward at, you know at least two or perhaps three maps and we say that this one map is our recommended map and we can write our report and we can we can vote on that but i do think that you know people are going to ask a lot of questions and so i think it is good to have these other maps and to do some analysis of the other maps um as like background and also Matt, for when the questions what? come up about like why was this done or why wasn't this done or things like that so i think that we're able to justify those but i don't i don't i personally don't feel like we need to vote and just say we are only choosing one map at this particular point marlene and then craig i think we should have some operating principles i mean one of yeah. the things is when i looked at and i i'm focusing on my precinct and my district one of the maps that i don't know i forget who, who proposed it it excluded the Fort River School, which is where precinct six voters vote. So to me and to people in my precinct, and, and I don't know where people in the other precinct in my district vote, but I think it's in a different location. I think it's important that we keep Fort River, for example, in that precinct. And that may generalize to all of the other precincts that we do have to consider where people vote because that's something that people just learn to depend on that they're always going to vote in the same place. Yeah. Craig, and then I want to answer to that. I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm in emotion. So, yeah. okay. Do we, does somebody want to second the motion? Or modify? Can I? I can yes. I make a suggestion? I mean, do we want to have some operating principles before we decide on which map we're going to select or which ma maybe two maps? Because I think I agree with Tracy that we should have an alternate map, but we should be focusing on one map. Once we established, you know, what are our values and what are our principles when we're in doing this? Yeah. So, so uh, hold up, uh, Irene, and, and yeah. this problem is where you're going, Craig. If he made a motion, um you, you did. should follow Robert's order particularly since this is yeah a public record that you considered his motion or it was not considered so if no one seconded it yeah. then it fails but you have to make that okay, official yes, that, that's I would what, suggest that that I, I was going in that direction so if nobody seconds okay. it fails, uh, we can continue discussing the regulations and then have another motion afterwards. I wanted to answer to Marilyn in the sense that it's my understanding that the voting location does not necessarily have to be in your precinct. In the past, I've, this year you had multiple precincts voting in the high school, for example, right? So voting location, the fact that the voting place is not the voting place does not mean that it has to be in the right precinct. So correct me if I'm wrong. You're, no, you're correct. We've well, got precincts two, four, and 10 at the high school. But then also, I mean, other precincts, like traditionally they've been outside of there too, but yeah. Yeah, so the, the fact, so the fact, so uh, Marilyn, does that clarify for you? That helps, I mean, I, I didn't know that, but yeah. That, okay. that would be, that would help. Okay. So regarding your principles, Peggy had come up with a list of principles that you can find them on the minutes on September. Um, what? 
14th. They're on the 14th, the principles? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want, we can go over it before. Um, as a reminder. Are you sure? Yes. So item D on page section nine, item D. The criteria at that point was no fingers or tails, no dilution of minority voting blocks, no breaking up neighborhoods, not to disenfranchise marginalized communities, distribute students and more permanent residents evenly, preserve current districts, give boost to districts that specialty in the county, and give a boost to districts that contain communities that have been historically diverse represented. So, I, for me, all this, if we could make it all this work, that's going to be great. But I, I understand that in some cases, they're <laughs> contradicting that we won't be able to satisfy all these principles. So one way to go is to look at, the, uh, have a suggestion in order to reduce the number of maps that we have, because right now we have multiple maps and multiple versions would be to have a quick look at certain maps and quickly discard the ones that we think that are not satisfying some of these principles. We could have a two minute discussion on each map time and then go discarding maps that might not be satisfying. Because I agree that we have way too many and we have to reduce the number. Um, and Greg, I agree, I agree that we have to reduce the number. At this point, we have to narrow it down. But the point that was that last time we narrowed from three possible maps to two, and we came up with districts possibilities based on these maps. And then based on that, there was some tweaking on the maps, right? Some maps got adjusted to because of the districting issues. So I think at this point, we have to look at the maps again that we had with the district possibilities and discard the ones that we think that don't satisfy this principle. I don't know if people agree with this way of proceeding, but I would try to go. We have way too many maps and I would like to go fast to the ones that are obvious that, that don't make sense. Tracy. Um, and then Marilyn. So I guess with the criteria, I don't know whether, I mean, there are a lot of good criteria here and a number of them deal with um, marginalized communities, you know, di um, districts that are undercounted and things. Um, and our criteria that we are required to use, like according to the information that was sent by town council, is that we are just supposed to be using the 2000 census data. Yeah. Even though that is like a single point in time, we already know that there are things that are no longer correct about it. You know, including, for example, like North Village is now no longer a residence. You know, there are new residences that weren't in the 2020 census. Um, so I don't know whether we, there were any of the, I think they're all excellent criteria and I would love to include them all, um, but I don't know whether it makes sense to, you know, as we're going forward and we're justifying what we did both to the council and to the state, um, if we want to continue to have like all eight criteria and also there, I mean, we have been talking recently about um, trying to more evenly distribute the voters, which is not something that I saw in the criteria. So they say item five, uh, not about item five, it's item five. Uh, Marilyn, you had a comment? Well, I, I, I did go through, I went through a couple of the maps and, and it was the option A, you know, map one, the only option where the districts corresponded to, closely approximated the current districts was option B. So if that's one of our higher level principles, I would say for map one, A and C are out. Okay, um, Peggy, and then I need to see the maps. I don't remember by heart, Peggy. So when I proposed the criteria, I was not suggesting that we necessarily follow them all. They are, some of them are mutually exclusive to each other. Um, I was putting them out because I thought that we were all 
following them without necessarily saying that. That I think we need to, as Marilyn said, we need to be clear on what our priorities are. So for Marilyn, it's clearly a priority to have the districts fit as closely as possible to past districts. That's not necessarily my priority, but that's clearly coming through that, you know, that so we have different ideas. I think the way to do it is to actually follow what Irena just said, which is to look at the maps, talk about them briefly, see what we can discard and see what we can land on as a, um, a small number going forward. And I would say I would want, I agree with Tracy that I would prefer to put out more than one because I think that it's really hard for the public and for the council to look at a map without having some sense of something to compare it to. So if the only thing they're comparing it to is our current map, they're gonna get a, a skewed idea of what might be possible. So. Yeah, I want to clarify, that's why I put my map back again yesterday, uh, just to compare it so that the people could compare to what the state doesn't actually want, but how districts could look compact, even though they think so. Craig? I, I'm, I have to apologize, but um, I'm out here in California because of a death in the family, and I have to attend to some things that I, and I can't stay on the meeting. So I, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to attend to my family. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we still have Corey. Marilyn? Um, I know it's it's only been three years, but I, I do think that people sort of affiliate with their districts. And I think that's one of the, the things that the district counselors are trying to accomplish is to get some sense of identity within your district. So it's not just for the counselors, but I think it's for, for the people who live in these districts to have some sense, as I said, to have some sense of identity and um, with the people in their neighborhoods, in their precinct, in their, in, in, in their district. And I think it's gonna be a difficult learning curve if we upend this and rearrange everything. Especially, you know, I mean, except along the edges. I don't know how other people feel about that. So, so, I mean, the re one of the reasons I propose that option B, Marilyn, that you're talking about is because it does keep the current pairs. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know whether with Peggy's map to the map to like whether she would feel comfortable keeping the current pairs just as an option to show the public. I, I that's not a priority for me, like based on the data that I've looked at, like including the voter distribution. Um, but I can understand why some people might feel that way. And um, mm -hmm. so I, I would be one of those version, you know, versions of the map that show that, but I would also like to show some alternatives, particularly if Mike is able to provide some of the data relating to the voting and show it spatially, like how it would work out in the different configurations. In fact, one of the public comments was regarding that was to try to see if they could um, about the voter, um, if they could see some voter, that we that should not be our guiding principle, but um, they were interested in seeing the the, the voter uh, turnout of or trying to even out more the voter turnout. Uh, for me, I'm not attached to the districts. I uh, I still think on precincts. I don't think in districts. Uh, the districts were created three years ago, and I understand for the town councillors might be a change, but again, the state is going to be doing with again at the state level. So we, our state representatives, might change even. Um, so I'm, I think, what we have to do is to do the best for the town and not for the town councillors. I, I know. For the I, time, I don't I, think I, it's the town councilors. I think that's part, part of my point. It's that people living in these districts have some identification with their district and their, and their district councilors. Um, but I think that that may vary, like depending yeah. on who you talk to, because yeah. in some districts, I know, for example, in District 3, which I am a member of, like so, um, you know, and the voter turned out in District 3 is small like for precinct four and precinct 10, it's quite small. But there are people, there are very devoted um, like neighborhood groups 
you know, Precinct 10 has a neighborhood association. They have tons of social events. They have emails that go out all the time. And there's connections in Precinct 4 too. Um, they are so much smaller and, you know, smaller in the number. They're physically smaller geographically and they're smaller in the number of voters, but there's some people who would like to keep them as close to what they currently are. Mm -hmm. Like, even though the, even though, I mean, in some ways, you know, for people to get elected in those districts, the fact that you only need to have like, you, you can have so many fewer votes. I, I mean, I, I don't feel so comfortable with that for other districts, um, but, but then there's people in other districts who've said that they don't feel like, I mean, do, for example, does district five just cover such a large area? Does district five as it is work? Does it, you know, are people who live on East Hadley Road, how connected are they to the people at the, like the far end of Bay Road? And I mean, just, and a lot of Amherst Woods is in district five. Like, how is that all like one cohesive area? I, I think some people may feel, I think it's possible that's, some of those larger districts and I don't live in one of them, but maybe people are more connected to some of their neighborhoods, you know, and as you said, to some of the precincts or the sub precinct areas and they are to like the whole district. But mm -hmm. I mean, if people who live in the larger districts want to speak to that, I, I, I just don't know what their experience is. But. Peggy. I'm in the largest district and I think we should look at the maps. <laughs> okay, let's go and look at the map. Mike, are you able, so we have, Let's look at uh, some over there. So right now on, I think we can skip the ones I created by hand on the discarded maps. Those were just to create a sense of um, contrast. Um, and, but I don't think the, anybody's willing to go over that. So we have map one, version three with multiple pages, map one, version four, map two, version three, map three, version one. Um, yes, Tracy. For whatever, map one, ver map three. So uh, we can just discard that. They're, they're literally one? the same map. So okay. the map, um, the map one PDF, it got added a fourth page, like map one, version four, which is literally the same map as map three, version one. And okay. I, I had asked um, Mike to put it in a separate packet because all of those map ones all have the same precincts and then they group the districts differently. Okay. And that version four, so we can just just. Um, oh, version version four is Peggy's version. Oh, sorry. Peggy, okay. Peggy tweaked your a version of your maps. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah, tell me which maps we want to look at side by side first because that's confusing. Okay, my because brain is earlier, very confused as well. Earlier map one version four was a version of map three. So yep, okay, yep. okay. So uh, I said have a suggestion since map three version one and map one version four are the latest ones that are tweaks on previous ones. Shall we start by the latest ones that have yeah. improvements? Sure. Uh, sure. Okay. Or... Okay. On the left is, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. On yeah. the left is map three version one. And on the right is map one version four. <clears throat> okay. So. So Peggy, for map one version four, could you explain the differences with the I, other can you, map? Mike, can you make them a little bit bigger within the... Or, I, I would actually ask, just because I haven't seen map one version four before, could we, um, could we just compare map one version three and map one version four? Or okay. whatever, I mean, just looking at it at the precinct level, just so I understand what the... Yeah. Okay. okay. Aside from the districts, but just the precincts. Um, okay. So the so the reason I tweak this is I I like some of the um, features of Tracy's map, um, in particular, based on some of the feedback we were getting. Like North Amherst, I wanted to um, I liked how North Amherst was more north, <laughs> had more north on it, um, and. I don't know, there were just a number of things, but I was concerned about the Fearing Street um, 
Lincoln Street neighborhood, which now several people have commented on is a very close neighborhood. I, I wasn't happy about the breakup there. Um, and let's see, I don't know, there were a number of things. So I, I, what I did was I changed district, I'm sorry, precinct 10, which had just been um, mostly Southwest and, and a little bit um, next to it and made it larger to include that whole neighborhood. So it's not getting broken up. Um, now the, uh, and I, I actually separate it from four. Right now it's connected to four. The reason that I separate it is because if you look at the voting records, four and 10 have the lowest voter turnout of all the precincts. Um, and so keeping them together, I, I appreciate that it's a neighborhood thing, but in terms of a voter, um, you know, equity thing, it's not great to have them together. So, um, so, uh, so what, what this basically the, the districts are is that the um, one and three are together. I also took away one of the dorms from three um, to, because of the large number of students that live off campus in North Amherst. So um, in terms of trying to balance that, um, and let's see, what else did I do? I don't know. I just, <laughs> those she are the moved, main. Tracy, she moved a total of 35 blocks. She okay. completed, she changed yeah. 35. So that sounds very it, small compared the, to well, you know, it, the, the biggest, the biggest area of change is exactly yeah, right. what okay, Peggy I mentioned right, right here in 10. Okay. And it's, it's, but all the other little things are like tiny little changes, yep. like here and there spread across the well, map, but a total of 35. And with, and with having to have each precinct under 4,000, I mean, you change one block and you automatically have to change like, I don't know, 10 or 20. Yeah. Or it's a domino effect. Exactly. Yeah. A, yeah. But, but so what about one the, more, one more I thing I want to say about it is that, yeah, and I'll, then I'll take questions, is that I was trying very hard to balance residence halls in as many, to distribute residence halls in as many districts as possible. I know that's not where all the students live. I know that students in various apartment complexes also don't vote, but we don't really have data for that. Um, and so it just, I just felt like distributing residence halls was um, the best I could do. Um, and I f I'm disappointed that um, the nine, 10 district, it's district four on this map, has as many people in residence halls as it does. It has over 5,000 and that's way more than I wanted. The average would be 3,000 per district. Um, but I'm pleased that the rest of the districts all come in at around 2,000 or between two and 3,000. So there is a fair amount of um, uniformity except for that middle one. And I wish I could bring that down but I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. Questions? I I have a question. Um, I can't see the map clearly enough, but the Emily Dickinson, that historic neighborhood, is that all in one precinct or in the same district? Because that's uh, the other historic looks, district that we looks, have. On this map, uh, map one version four, it looks to be um, Maryland. Um, yeah. Okay. So that, that goes up, main, up and down Main Street, both sides of the street. Um, down towards the railroad tracks on Main Street. <clears throat> okay. I must say, okay. I like the map. I think it takes, um, I think it has taken things from all the other maps. So maybe um, just since people are looking at it for the first time, maybe Mike, can you make it larger? Uh, map uh, one, that, version four. I, do we want to talk more? Yes. I see people squirt into the computer, so. I mean, it's so hard because Amherst is such a, can I rotate Amherst 90 degrees and then it'll be really big. <laughs> How many times have I tried to do that actually? So I guess, so one comment I have about this map um, is that, so it doesn't, it keeps some of the districts the same, right? So one and three yeah. and two and six and, um, but then in the middle, right? Oh, and I guess nine and five, no, 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 no. they're not the same. Um, so I, so one thing I was thinking about just with South Amherst um, is that 
it does connect the South Amherst um, precinct, the precinct eight, like with five and five goes all the way like to almost to UMass. Is that right? Yes. So it includes the Amherst College dorms and then it goes like pretty close to UMass along like triangle and things. So yes, I guess I guess a question would be how do the people who are covered, you know, in precinct eight, like feel about being so connected to that? I mean, like demographically, it's pretty different than um, part. But like, um, the downtown district is I mean, precinct is pretty different than some of the um, some parts of but, but Tracy, all of them they have no, the I, same no, I, the same thing is North Summers. If you take right. at the end of Market Hill Road, it's gonna be very different from um, North Pleasant next to the campus. And that's right. gonna be one district. So all that's the nature of um, Yeah, no, I understand. So it's not just South Summers, it's North Summers as well. Uh, it's, that's the nature of our town. I would also, as the as the only resident here of South right, Amherst, no, of I I appreciate your comment, Tracy, because I've I've been thinking about that a lot about wanting to make sure that various areas of town feel that they are represented and not necessarily co opted by another area to which they're connected, right? So to have you know both councilors from uh, District Five in this case elected from the center of town that wouldn't feel that great, um, and I. That's right, it wouldn't feel that great. On the other hand, the other option is to have a district which is only South Amherst. And in that case, we end up with way, way more voters than anybody else. So it's a trade-off. And I think I'm coming in on the preferring to have a, um, a diverse district and yeah. run the risk of, of a counselor that doesn't come from my neighborhood so and i guess see. and i and i will just speak i mean to your you're muted the new version of the map i created map three like it does um it does something somewhat similar where it's connecting south amherst to that section between um southeast street mm -hmm. and south pleasant street up to the center of town and i the north mm -hmm. end of mine is college street mm -hmm. and I did go beyond, I didn't go north of College Street. Um, and one reason, one reason I did that is I was trying to have more, uh, an additional South Amherst precincts. Um, but also because, um, because I mean that, that section going up from like Mill Lane, like north to College Street is that, you know, there's, there's um, Groff Park and things, but then I mean, there's the Amherst College dorms, and again, so that the voter, the number of voters wouldn't be that large. Like, so in terms of that, in terms of five, it is predominantly Amherst College, and then there's some of the, I mean, there's rental housing in those neighborhoods north of the college, like up to Triangle. So, so. Dee has a, her hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted Peggy to explain. Um, the diversity that you're talking about, can you be more specific within your map for South Amherst? I'm a resident of South Amherst as well. And, you know, I. so what areas you're talking about are more diverse? Oh, I wasn't speaking to that actually. I am, um, in my map, what I was trying to do overall was to hopefully have um, some of the housing complexes where the greater numbers of people of color are not split into every, you know, they're, they're not split into a lots of different districts because it felt like that would um, lessen their voice. So part of my map is to have um, Colonial Village, Rolling Green and uh, Village Park are all in one district. And then North Amherst where there are a lot of other um, various areas where we have higher residents of other ethnicities and of color are also together in a district. Um, so in terms of what I was just saying about diversity, what I meant was uh, was saying more like a rural urban thing that in my map, what I have is South Amherst in the deep red huh? is I'm thinking of as more urban. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it's more rural. And mm -hmm. the green that it's connected to is more urban. And so potentially the people in 
one part of that district or the other might feel like they weren't getting represented if both counselors came from the other part. Oh, I see what you're saying, because Colonial Village is... Uh, it's on the... Colonial, Colonial Village, Village is right here. Right. No, I see it. I, and then um, the Palmeroy Lane, I uh, forget what those apartments are called, and then Court or whatever, and then oh. across here on West Street as well somewhere. Let's see. Oh, Southeast Street. Yeah, okay. So West uh, Pomeroy, West Pomeroy is on three. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so those are boundaries. So I don't think that Peggy's okay. moved around that part of the map. So I did a, a lot of the precincts were the ones that I had come up with for. And the reason I extended that precinct precinct seven out toward like along Shea Street, which just had it had to do with related to Crocker Farm and just connecting the air the sending area for Crocker Farm to include Mount Holyoke Drive and those things just south of Mike's hand there that um are all part of the Crocker Farm neighborhood. Um, and so um, the voters, you know, the voters in Precinct 7, they currently vote at Crocker Farm. And there are other versions of the map that cut off Precinct 7 at um, 116 South Pleasant West Street. And so then Crocker Farm would technically be outside of that. So I was just trying to extend it a little bit to reflect like those neighborhoods. But I mean, I, I like, I, there's a lot I like about the map and I like that um, you've connected, you know, addressed some of the issues with Sunset and Lincoln and Fearing and things, including, I mean, we just heard tonight, like a comment from somebody who lives in Fearing. Um, I, I guess my preferred version of this map though would link um, precinct, ten, I mean, precinct four and 10 as district three still, but just- Tell, just tell me why. Just based on the feedback that I've gotten from the the neighborhood, just that, um, like the people really. So if we can zoom back in, Mike. Yep. Sorry. Ah. It, it's that other, yeah. Yeah, full screen mode. Um. So 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 one of the things is that. I mean, people, so Amity, like it splits along Amity Street and people on the na the south side of Amity Street and the north side of Amity Street to each other, um, just as, as a neighborhood. Um, and so, um, and, and one, I mean, you know, one of our, one of our counselors live in the blue in the new precinct 10 and one live in precinct four. And so it's just there's that kind of I mean, just like in the other neighborhoods, there's people who feel strongly that like that this is connected, like that the two the but, two are connected going towards UMass. So Tracy, I mean that's just one perspective. Yeah. So Tracy, then if that was the case, if you were connecting those two, yes. uh, then you have a whole precinct district that then, shows Amherst, then, or right or then you, you have to connect. Um, the green, the olive one with the yellow one, and then connect the purple no, with the light right. blue. No, if you, I, so Arena, if you were gonna, if you were going to, I guess my preferred version of this map over this one uh, would be, would be to have, I mean, to, what Marilyn had raised earlier is about keeping the the precincts and the district but, pairing the way they are now, despite the issues with them. So, I, I mean, that issue. was one. That was one reason I came up with that other ver that other version, the map three. Yeah. But, I I would have an issue about South Amherst, but uh, about I understand. Um, so that's why. why I, um but i think the base layer is good and i mean i i would agree like with this version of the precincts so so um, i have a suggestion um not a motion a suggestion we can briefly look at the other ones sure. but i think there's agreement so far that people like these precincts and one option would be to start playing maybe have 
this as a top contender for the precincts, and then they, we can have more options with the with the districts. True. That's true. But first, before doing yeah. that, I would like to have a quick pan over all the other ones yeah. to see if there's anything so, that we are missing. So, so the other, um, yeah, I mean, there are a few other pairings that we could try and that I had looked at on the version of the map that I came up with. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So what do we want to look at side? So I had, uh, geez, map three version one. This is your updated so, one, right? Correct, Tracy? Um, yes. Yeah, that's the totally, that's a different one. So I guess the question so, for Peggy is, does Peggy feel like she wants to continue with map two, like versions of map two, or that you would want to go with map one version four? Uh, well, if I'm choosing, I prefer map one version four. Okay. I, just, I have a question. Not that you have to choose, but, but just as we're trying to eliminate like some of the options. You're asking me to choose among my children? <laughs> 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 I feel the same way. <laughs> okay. Can I go back to mine? Um, yeah. uh, so Tracy, this one is very different in the north. Right? Yes. I mean, I based some of that um, on your map. I based some of it on your map. Stuff. Yes. Um, so I think there are things I like on this one. I think there are things that we might get pushed back on this, on the green olive finger. I can right explain that though. Can we, we can, Mike, if you zoom in really closer, even on the interactive maps. Um, I, haven't, I haven't published this one on the yeah. interactive map yet. Okay, well, so one of the challenges with this, I oh, so we're showing all the street layer. But so that that protrusion area that goes along Northampton Road, the most westerly part of that is Amherst College fields, including the Amherst College like soccer field, lacrosse field, and the football fields. And it's also this weird. Um, if we pull up the interactive map, you can see there's like this weird little extension of it past the fields, like into those neighborhoods to the right. Um, it also includes um, orchard and uh, woodside and things, the neighborhoods just to the east of the fields. Um, so it, it's pretty connected to Amherst College. And so, um, and that's why I left it in precinct five, which is also connected to Amherst College because the Amherst College dorms are reflected along the um, north of Northampton Road to the west of North Pleasant Street. Some of those are dorms and so on. Um, and also running along Northampton Road, there's some dorm blocks in there too, including that are under the border lines. Um, and so it looks funny. And I mean, and so if we wanna make the lap, map look more visually less protruding in that area, you know, it's possible. Though there is this weird, um, census block, as I said, but it's possible to maybe take away, you know, change one of the, change the most westerly part to be in precinct three, I'm in district, I'm sorry, in precinct four, like district three and balance it somewhere else. Um, but at the same time, I feel like we could justify it pretty well, like for why it's the way it is just because of Amherst College and it might work better than, um, the alternatives and like practically speaking in terms of like keeping the neighborhood together but i can actually i'll just pull up that one section if people have questions about that i have a question while you're pulling it up where is the single um unit occupancy residence or structure going to be in relationship to that map. I know it's close to the stadium, but I'm not the Amherst College It's across stadium. the street. It's on the other side of the street. Okay, so it's, it it's, be... it's actually, it, it would be in the, it would be in the purple. Oh, actually, purple. I'm sorry. It would actually be in the red. It would be in the, I'm sorry. It would be in precinct yeah. five. It would be along Northampton Road. But on the other right, side. Kind of like where Mike is. Yeah, because it's, Oh, it's, it's in the surrounded green. it's yeah it's in the green it's surrounded by the football stadium okay the, is it, to the the field property to the south 
Oh, I, mean, I thought it north. was on the other side of the road. Sorry. It okay. is on. It is on the south side of Northampton. Okay. Road. I mean, it is my across. Mistake. It is across from Sunset. Okay. Roughly, between yeah. Sunset and Lincoln, and it's um, very close to Orchard. And Orchard is the street that is right to the um, right of Mike's Arrow, the north south street. That's Orchard. So it's like right where the arrow is, where his white arrow is. In addition, I mean, in that area, you also have the new development um, from Barry Roberts, which is opened across from Stop and Shop, and that is in the pink or the purple. Yep. So that's there, it replaced Amherst Motel. So at the time that the census was done, that was not open and Amherst Moose Tell was still open. Okay. Um, and Green's, Green Leaves is also along there. So Green Leaf is in uh, the pink as well. Yeah, it's in this area. District three. So I can't see the combinations, but is the green, what district is that in? The so in Peggy's version, oh, Oh, sorry. So in my version of the map, in my version of the map, I connected the downtown area, like Triangle, Main Street and stuff to the area, including Amherst Woods. If that's, no, it's Amherst, if you're, which, which and, color? And Echo Hill. No, the, the, no like, Echo, where Mike Echo. is looking right now, where the four is. So four is. Echo it's Hill downtown. and Amherst Woods, and I connected them that way. Okay, so those are both large voting precincts. I'm not sure you want to go there if it's four and if it's what is it currently precinct six and precinct eight. That's a huge population of voting, a voting population. So the where Mike is now is that precinct six? I don't think so. I think no, that's, precinct more, six is, that's precinct, precinct five more okay. and, and some precinct nine. I used to live on near the high school and that was high, precinct nine. And so that olive color has merged sections of precinct five and sections of precinct nine together. Okay, and where's precinct eight? Is that in the same district? The South Amherst district. Where, Pre where precinct eight is South Amherst and that would, is in district five. So what this map did is, it um it took Amherst Woods south of Beltertown Road and instead of having it be in precinct eight, it put it in precinct six to say that it's more East Amherst than South Amherst. And so, and that's how you created these three separate sections that go into quote South Amherst, south of downtown. And so I'm, this, I'm a little this, confused. Okay, so this, I'm presently in what the area, the area I live in, which right. is Right, you live on Echo Hill, four. right? You're currently okay. in six, right? Right, I'm or, in six and it's late, right. this is labeled. So this is part now part of district four. And is that inclusive of the Amherst Woods area too? It includes most of Amherst Woods, except for the section down near Station Road. I couldn't fit all of, I couldn't fit all of it in. Like there's one street that didn't go in. To, um, okay, so if you're con if you're concerned about voting, I mean, those are both areas that have very large percentages of people who vote. Which areas? And, well, the the Amherst Woods and Echo Hill. So what's now labeled four would have a very would would probably I mean people might object because of the mm. you know, the voter turnout in those two areas. Yeah, I think I think that's where it's helpful to look at them. I guess I was trying to, I mean, I, I did that division because I was trying to separate Amherst Woods from other parts of the South Amherst district because South Amherst just has a large number of voters in general. Peggy has her hand up. But I just wanted to, I just had a couple comments. Um, there's a lot of things I like about this map. Um, one of the things that puzzles me though, is that that middle, that dark green precinct um, is right in the center of town and it's snuggled up against UMass. And I don't think there's a single residence hall in it. And that just feels like a lost opportunity. Like that's a, that's a place where it would be easy to put some students. I mean, there's some Amherst College residence halls, but when I added them up, that ends up being like 
500 students. Um, so I, I'm I, just. I think there are student residence halls in there. Huh, okay. Um, I can double check the numbers, but I think in the like the north part of that olive color, like there's some okay. residence halls. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see in? them. But okay, all right. Can you zoom huh. in, uh, Mike? I think. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, this is not on the interactive map yet. I did this right. today. Um, <laughs> so, um, um, so that's North Pleasant going up. That's Common or that's Mass Ave. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I have to. Yeah. There might be a, a couple little ones right um, yeah. west of North Pleasant, but the big ones are all north in two, yeah. which actually works be. for me. Like it works for me to put all those up there, but I, so I guess my main concern here is that again, by putting four and 10 together, and I hear okay. why you want to do that, you've put the two precincts that have the lowest voting turnout together, and you've put um, in South Amherst, you've taken Amherst towards out, so that's that'll help a little bit, but you've put all of Amherst. South Amherst together and they have the highest generally voter turnout. So again, it just feels like with these particular districts are gonna be really uneven. And so I'm wondering whether there's a way to rework the center of town where um, the three, uh, I'm sorry, four and 10 or district three gives up a bunch of Southwest perhaps to the green oh, um, and then everything else gets shifted to accommodate that so that oh i see yeah so that we so that a bunch of you know that so we boost up the district three here with a lot of people who aren't in residence halls and um shift those over somehow i don't know i had i would have to look at it but no sure that's just that's wondering good. whether that might be possible right shift i can take a look too It's hard with Southwest though, because um, I'll, I'll just pull up the interactive map for a second. It's hard with Southwest because there's that one census block in Southwest that has the 2,512 people. Yeah. And then um, you can't really like get and around it. And it's, and it's, like, and it's like taking up most of the yeah. east west connection and then like the other ones don't connect and all that yeah. stuff yeah. <laughs> yes. so that's one thing i liked about the way arena had split a new version of precinct 10 and you came up with peggy better than what you and i both had originally with just mainly that 25 12 block and like two other blocks one of which had like 700 and something people and one of which had 300 because what Rene had did is she took the 700 one, which is to the north of the 2512, and she put it into a precinct that went to the west. And that distributed it a little better, just because 700 is such a large number, like for the residential, that residential neighborhood outside of the dorms. And so it does extend, it allows us to extend precinct 10, like into more residential areas instead of right at the dorms. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a minute and like pull. So I, I would like to see a consensus I'm hearing about from the, the rest of the members. I think we have several maps where precinct 10 was just at the center and, and nothing else. I think um, what I'm hearing is that we are moving away from those maps into maybe and we should concentrate in this Two maps. I want to hear from everybody to see if that's the case. And these are the two that we should be tweaking. So Peggy? Um, yeah, I'm comfortable with going forward with these two. Um, with I, I get, let me just say again that my feeling is that we should be thinking about where we want the districts. And yeah. then once we know where the districts are, we divide the districts into precincts. So, um, so in as much as we can do that with these two maps, I'm good. Okay, Tracy. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, 
I would be happy to go forward with these two districts. I hear the concerns that Not Peggy, Peggy raised um, about the way that that new map, the map three is created. Um, so, yeah. And so I, th I think it is, you can't really separate the districts and the precincts just because Right, we need to do the precincts for the 4,000. I do think the districts are more important. I know when I was looking at map three that I didn't, in, per, like in my area, like in district three, I didn't focus so much on, oh, this block is in precinct 10, oh, this block is in precinct four, because I knew that they were gonna be combined into the district, the okay. district three. And and the reason I continue to, you know, sort of advocate, even though I think there's some issues up three because I was trying to balance out the voters more. Um, it's just just from talking to people in my district, they just feel strongly about it being continuing to be like their district as it is, even though even though there is the voter imbalance. So, okay. Marlene, so go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I muted. Yeah, I'm muted. I would have to start, I mean, if, if we can consider sort of recombining some of the precincts into, you know, aligning them so that in the districts where they presently exist, and I don't know that either of those maps have the current district assignments. Um, but I think, you know, we have to start somewhere. So if we want to start here, I, I don't have a problem with, but I am concerned about our time. And yeah. we have, you know, a little over half an hour to move forward. And I'm not sure that we're yeah. making a lot of progress. Um, Joseph? Um, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Um, I think these are two good maps to use moving forward. Uh, I think I want to keep an eye on the central Amherst area. That is also the area like I know best, sort of the center of town, because that's where I live. Um, but I agree with what's been said by everyone so far. Okay, so at this point, I think we hear consensus that these are the two maps that we we are looking, and we are trying to adjust looking at precincts and districts based on these two maps, and not the other maps that we had. Right mm -hmm. now. Um, I think uh, we need to look at districts and we need to look at precincts. We need to look at the, the factors that I think the map three version one may have some issues raised by the state because of the fingers, um, particularly on the olive one. I think that is going to be a flag that is going to be raised. Um, Sorry, can I just show like why? So the main figure on the olive one is this thing along Northampton Road, right? Does it feel like there's other fingers too? No, that, that one. Main? So can I, I just want to pull that up in the interactive map. Is it possible for me to share my screen for a moment? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Well, let me, let me see. We might need to promote you. Let me, let me stop sharing. Okay, I can share my screen. Okay. Um, so, all right. So what I was running up to when I was looking at this one is, so this is a section that we're talking about here along Northampton Road, right? And as I said, so this is Amherst College, you know, which I had put into that precinct eight, again, because there's not that many voters in that area. And then it connects to South Amherst and this is all Amherst College. And then these here, um, this 47 is just such um uh, yeah if I can, <laughs> sorry i just i want to figure out a way just to show it without yeah we can see it yeah okay i mean so the 47 is just an odd shape right that it includes the fields and then it includes a little bit of housing to the west including the street hazel avenue which i think is probably predominant there's a few homeowners um it's also predominantly i think uh, students but yeah. so i could move 40 i could move this one with 47 like into you know i could put it in one of the other <laughs> districts 
but then I just didn't want to cut cut it off. I mean, so this is this is this is Amherst College Fields too, and then this is this neighborhood, um, the neighborhood that I know Mary, Mandy Jo Henneke had brought up around Woodside and Orchard and things. One version of my map I had taken that uh, census block with the twenty, and I had put it into. Um, I hadn't kept it in five. Like this whole area is currently all in five, you know, but we're sh we're shifting the population a little bit with the changes at UMass and downtown. So the thing with this, the um, the one with twenty is that it's actually only one. There's actually only one home. There's only one home along Orchard Street. Um, so Tracy, that that is. Um, uh huh. Go ahead. I think that um, this 47, uh, considering that there are the fields in between, right, uh, make, make sense to make it. So if you just remove that part, the if we just remove 47, okay. So the, the partition doesn't, doesn't look as big. No, I, I know exactly. Okay. So, so then the partition doesn't look as big and then the shape is more compact. Yeah, and sweet. considering I, that there is considering that the the the, the fields are in between, I I there might be more uh -huh. makes more sense to be next to the other precinct. Yes. So maybe. then, what we would do, I mean, forty seven then would go into the precinct, this precinct. Okay, Marley? And, and this precinct. Well, my my understanding is Hayes Lab. I think it's residential, and I think it's a large African American population. Um, Historically, that's where there have been a lot of African Americans. I don't know if they're still there, but um that is there. a historic neighborhood because that was one of the only places that afro americans were able to live and that also those historic neighborhoods extend northampton road too that is no longer the case those that neighborhood it's about 10 15 houses it, it predominantly consists of student rentals at this moment okay but you're right that it was a historic district originally okay i thought it still was Okay. I think it's still it's a currently a historic district. I think they um, it was a like the latest historic district. We should check that, but I I believe it is now. It is a historic district still. I'm what I'm saying is that the current residents like don't reflect that history. Oh, I mean, is, I mean, is it in, is it important to keep the historic district together when it's not? when the residents are different at this time. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, they're, they're mainly student rentals. Okay. okay. So and also in that and also in that area, Tracy, there's a new the new affordable housing unit going up on Northampton Road, right? Yeah, that's the one that's in the 20 block. That yeah, that's in that's, the 20 block. Okay, I, yeah, I couldn't uh -huh. remember exactly where it was. No, okay. that's okay. exactly that's in the 20 block. Yeah. So can we go back to the maps? Yes. So if in the map on the left, that would take the last two blocks, right? Um, so that would just take the one block because remember how I showed you how 47, it okay. has that weird thing that goes, that goes yeah, all the way like I think, to little, like South Pleasant Street. Yeah, almost. there's like a okay. weird. Yeah, like so I can I can look at at where to move that to, and I also want to look at Peggy's question about does this precinct that all of precinct include any dorms, because I think that was an important question too. I can look at that more. If we look at the rest of the map, the, there is big differences on um, over there where you have the arrow comparing the two maps. So um, even if you add up um, by district, the border moves south considerable on the west side. I don't know if that's just the mainly empty or there is um, that's a UMass campus. I think that's mainly um, non-residential area, right? Um, yes. 
Okay. So mm -hmm. since there is an issue of geometry. And yeah, up to Governor's <laughs> Drive, right? So that's like the main part of campus. Yes. Um, it does that, the lower section of that north of Mass App does include the Commonwealth College dorms. Okay. Right in, which are about right 900, okay. beds, 900 beds. Okay. Mm, I'm just, a, yes, or, I'm just trying to look because the other big difference is two. Um, geographically, two is very different, right? In one, you have um, Echo Hill, and in the other one, you stay to town, right? Yes. Yes. And then South Amherst, in one case is split into South Amherst minus the west side. I'll leave it. Um, yeah, the one on the right, um, the di you're talking about districts, right, Irina, when you're referring? Yes. Yeah, so on the, one, on the map on the right, South Amherst goes all the way up beyond College Street, you know, in the center yeah. of town, goes all the way up almost right. to the roundabout in the middle of town versus on the map on the left, it kind of ends at College Street right here. Right, and then you also have to think about that there's, I mean, that's Amherst College right to the south of your arrow, Mike, and then and then there's this open area with Groff Park and so right. on, and then you're back yep. in South Amherst. Right, yep. And I made that northern boundary at College Street intentionally. Yeah. But, but it doesn't, I mean, to what Peggy brought up before, right, is it includes the Amherst College dorms, but it doesn't include dorms. Right. So I have a, a question and a, a concern. I, I'm, I'm okay with both maps. I think, I think we'd like to know about the, the voter registration yeah. or voter turnout. I think that's what many people have been asking just when we are making the decisions. Um, I'm concerned that um, on the one on the left, we might get red flags because of the narrowness of connecting. Yeah. Well, uh, I, no, the connection between on four, that connection right with narrowness, here. yes, we might get a red flag there. The, well, they're this, only going to be looking at precincts. They're not going to be looking yes. at districts. Um, so I'm just, you know, listening to everything that you guys are saying, and I'm just trying to look at things kind of from a higher level. Um, I would say that just from a, a completely amateur naked eye here that the blocks or the precincts on the map on the right are more that okay. rounded shape that Sue was referring to earlier. The, the precincts are versus, you know, the orange one here is, a, it's, it doesn't have fingers and tails protruding, but it is more of a, like an elongated shape. And the same thing with the blue one here. And I know we're going to tidy up the olive shape, but I'm not saying they are going to be issues, but I think we're more likely to hear that there are issues with shapes of precincts on the map on the left than we would by submitting the map on the right. So just my opinion. I mean, I guess to speaking to that though, like I, I feel like if we look at the current, if we look at our current map, <laughs> like that there are some like protrusions and things in the current map, I think just given the nature of Amherst. I mean, I hear oh, what I you're saying. Ab I absolutely but like, can agree. you just, I mean, just, Mike, can you just pull up like our current precinct map? Just yes. Give me so just we can a show. I mean, give me just a second. And I'm not, I, just to make sure that I'm clear, I'm not saying that they will have issues. I'm not saying, I'm saying that if they were to compare the two side by side, they would say, oh, oh the one on the right is more rounded and the one on the left has more elongated shapes. No, I understand that, yeah. We're not gonna give them two. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not giving the state to. I think we'll give. Yeah, let's give the them. Let's give them. We might. Eight. Let's we give might give eight. the council to. I mean, I guess well, the question know. is: Do we need to do? Would would it be advantageous for us to show the state two maps or? No, 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 Tracy, no, no. We should give them one. Okay, Tracy, we should give one, and also to the council, we only give one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. If not, it's not that the council has a. Um, it's not that they choose. Um, I. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think we could. Couldn't we give the council one and say we also looked at the options? I'm not sure. I, I sort of feel like the council. Some of the council members like to look at the the data a lot themselves, and so. I feel like some of them may say, what about these other options? And and again, just because I think also when it goes to the council, that's also when the public will see it the most. They, they have those options now though. I mean, yeah, I understand. they know where all yeah. the information is. Yeah, they true. know that the information okay. is and I've been calling for that's a true. meeting. So, yeah. um, um, so. So yes, on the current map, there's this really weird precinct one um, and I believe I, I, I was not here during the last time. I believe that there was some back and forth about that tail on pre yeah. between precinct one and precinct three with the state and with the town, the previous go rounds and they had, to, they had to justify it. Um, <clears throat> so, so Mike, can I, can I ask a favor? Can you put the map, this one, and for example, let's, uh, look this one compared to, um, Maybe the last one, the other one, the one that is more compact. Yeah, Peggy's map. Peggy's map. We call uh, them Peggy. So because, Peggy's, uh, Peggy, Peggy's map. Hand, Peggy's Peggy, map Peggy, is here. Hand, your hand is raised. Can, yeah, so you can hide the one, the map three and put the map one version four. Up. Peggy, okay. you had your hand raised, you have a comment? I, I just wanted to, I'm noting the time, it's 20 a.m. Yeah. And so after this, perhaps we could decide our next steps. Yes, Definitely. I know. But I wanted to, to because we know, I just I wanted to look at the comparison of how they look. And. Um, can I, can I just real quick? Yes. Um, just want to remind everyone of our charge. It's to yeah. propose a districting map. So singular one map. Yeah, absolutely. That's all. Yeah. 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 So when when the last time I looked at the data, I haven't um, compared compared that the Peggy's map map you know map one version four compared with the map one version three. Like when I had looked at the numbers before, it does change about twenty percent in terms of the pre in terms of population changing precincts it changes about 20% of the population changes precincts and if we look at that new map that i had come up with um, the map 3 it changes like significantly more than that because it was just trying to really you know reshape some of the precincts so, in the district so i mean that's something to consider like how close we want it to try to stay so um, what i see in the one here on the right, it does have some changes. Okay, the first thing is we had big population changes, so we're gonna have to change for the fact. We have precincts go up by 1500, we have precincts go down by 700. So we have to move the boundaries of the precincts no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. It's not that we can stay. Mm -hmm. um, that's for the fact that the population changes and that's why we are doing the redistricting. Um, on average, these two, they do have changes, particularly on the south because it's splitting, it's uh, rearranging and leave it. But otherwise, in other places, it's staying as close as possible, I think, as you can be. Like North Amherst is north as East Amherst is staying quite similar. Correct me if I'm wrong on my reading of the two maps. Um, East Amherst, uh, North Amherst, like that whole like High Point neighborhood, right? Yes, like, that is changing. It's changing, oh, but it's ah, but it's changing. It's still in the same districts, except that some part of Prison Two now are part of Prison One. 
Right. So except that, but I think geographically- There's not, there's the, not a lot of population out there. No, but also I think it, the, I think it might make sense the way it's grouped now versus before. And when, we received I mean, that one comment, right? From yes. somebody who lives in North so, Amherst that it made sense. Yeah. So that now South Amherst, the, maybe the biggest change is that facing seven and prison eight under these districts would not be together and the prison seven has shifted and that's reflected the change in population and Hampshire College. Um, mm -hmm. We have a big, so that's why right. the big changes in this area, I think the big changes on the West is due mainly to the big changes in population has happened on the West side of town. Hampshire College has gone down and uh, more on the center that has gone up. Marlene, you have a comment. So a couple of questions. What would it look like if we rearranged map one version four so that the, it would have the same combination of precincts within districts? One of the things I've observed is that we have two districts. Actually, well, there's district five has only is less than 7,800. District two has just 7,800. Um, there's you know, do we want to build, particularly the 7762, do we want to increase, is there any way we could increase that so it's above 7800, perhaps, you know, decreasing, um, what's District 3? Is there any way we can tweak District 3 and move some of those into District 5, but particularly in that little wedge um, to the east? But, and why do you want to do that? Well, just so they're more balanced in terms of population. But I, mean, I it's think kind of it's different, but, but you know. It's, it's, it says that as long as we're within like the 5%. I understand that. Yeah. All I'm saying is yeah, there's, no. there's some room I, to tweak it. And District I think, 3, as it is, looks, you know, it looks like it's got a finger or a protrusion. I think I, I don't know what the streets those are and whether it's possible to take you some of to? those people. Yeah, right around there. That was, I mean, that was the one that I said that I connected because of Crocker Farm. I think I think oh. part of the reasoning is also to split so that because of voter turnout of voter registration. So then um, if not one again, they becomes heavier in the one that has more voter um, turnout. I know that that's not part of the charge, but uh, that's as a resident. I mean, I feel like Peggy, it would be. I just said I, I would agree with that since since precinct eight has the highest turnout of anybody in town. I don't think we want to make that any yeah. bigger than possible. In fact, we may want to make it smaller in terms yeah. of population. OK, Tracy. I mean, so that was one thing I had looked at in that other map three is just about like possibly keeping Hampshire College like in just in the precinct seven you know, splitting it up a little or like a Renee's map had actually gone all the way down to include like Applewood and so, so on and taking Applewood out of um, precincts, uh, precinct eight, district five. So, I mean, so that was one of the things that map three did. It's just, it's hard to make it all balanced, <laughs> but, um, but that's why I had looked at that a little bit. So, I mean, one of the big challenges, one of the big challenges with this precinct seven as it is, and this is why on the map three, I went and I made the purple precinct go all the way down to East Hadley Road. It's just there between okay. north and south of East Hadley Road and Orchard Valley and so on to like split, to have the numbers balance. But. Okay, so it's 7.48 and we need to come to a decision. So we have, um, maybe one and a half meetings. So we need to zone in on one map or two and work on the districts and the possibilities and whether they need to be changed because I think next time we have to start writing the report. Yes. Right, that, that's my timeline. Next week we have to start writing in the report yes. and the justification. So I think we need to come to an agreement um, 
I don't know if it, how do we feel. I think everybody felt that these two maps were okay. And now how ex, um, do we want to concentrate efforts in one of these two maps and look at possible combination of districts moving forward? Or we keep both maps on the table and uh, look at the combination of districts in the two. Peggy? I think we should keep both maps on the table. I think um, people should look at all of the different things that we bring to this. We're coming from all over town. That's the idea. It's like, look at it in terms of your neighborhood, in terms of your district, look at it in terms of voter registration or voter turnout, look at it in terms of all the, you know, whatever. Um, I'm wondering, can we also like post these in the library um, or something? This is our last chance to get voter input. Yeah. Public comment is between now and next Tuesday. So if we can just, you know, get that and then next Tuesday we make a decision and start the report. Okay. Marlene? I would also suggest if we're going to post it that we may want to add some of that information like voter turnout in each of these proposed districts, you know, historically what it's been or maybe just, you know, the last election, just so that people have some context and um, and maybe the old district or precinct line so they can see what's happened with their respective neighborhoods. Marilyn, I, I, I wonder the old one, I, I agree that we should have maybe the information, but I think we have to put into context that we cannot keep the old ones because of uh, they no longer satisfy. So I'm wondering, people might say, oh, I want to keep mine as it is. I don't want to change it. Uh, if they haven't been following when that option is out of the table. Now, okay, I'm so concerned this may I can create a confusion. Okay, so I guess one question I have for, you know, I'm not sure if it's both of them. Do we want to see what the numbers would look like if we use the old district configuration? Because I know there's a couple of places, I think in map one version four, where they, the um, precincts don't map into the old districts. Just a couple of exceptions. I forget which it is that I, when I was looking at it. Um, what if we were to provide another option where it's reconfigured to reflect the old, the former districts with the existing boundaries? It, I don't know. I mean, like what with you the mean. existing pairs, because I don't think yeah. we can go back yeah, so all the way so to the, the district, former. So, so district one would be. Um, one and three. One and three, two and district two. two and six. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was one, that sure. was the one that you had looked at, Marilyn, where it was like the map one, like with the option B, right? So where yeah. we kept the old districts just to show what that looks like. I mean, I, I do think it is helpful to show people what the old pairs would look like, even if we're changed, you know, even though there's reasons that we've changed it. So. Mm -hmm. Mike, I have a question for you. Um, how fast? <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> how fast could you add a line of information to each of these maps with the voter turnout based on the mm -hmm. census blocks? So based on these maps to this current or, or could we have it on a separate page? It seems like we got a lot of information on the map. Yeah, I think the map. I, I think I, I, I think know what it, I'm looking at, and I think it's really overwhelming. <laughs> so, so one thing I could say is for uh, um, we could pare down to to share with people the, the the information about population. So instead of having this, the two tables on the left, the variance. Yeah. Yeah, we, we could I, add the, I could we could replace the the variance by um, like number of voters. Or the number of voters, maybe. So I, I don't just, think we need to show the variance. I don't need the, yes, I don't think we need to show the variance because as long as they satisfy that, but maybe it would it be possible to show the number of voters. So just to be clear. Um, I only have number of registered voters. I don't. I don't know yeah. whether they showed up to the polls or not last. No election, number right? of registered no. voters. Yeah. Uh, that's the the right. best thing that we can have. The right. number of registered voters. 
and are we using then are we using um with the issue with the students we're using the active voters not the inactive and the active voters i don't think you i mean yeah, yeah. i don't know yeah. enough i don't know enough about the data but if like you're that. If you're starting to include inactive people, no, I agree. It uh, just, I think just, it opens just the is what gates. Sue mentioned up because there's only like 26 active voters at UMass. Mm. That's all. But I think we have so. to to be realistic. Maybe there's a footnote or somewhere, but I think we just at least we get information <laughs> in other parts of the town. Yeah. And I, I believe, looking at the data set, there's just about 10,000 active voters in in, in Amherst, a little bit over 10,000. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and when you include inactive, it it, it goes up to like 20,000 or something, mm -hmm. closer to 20,000. 16. 16, yeah. Yeah. So still well below our population of 3,000, 39,260. Well, I mean, and that's another reason to say that we don't need 15 precincts because we don't have that many voters. Yeah, um, but that, we can't use, we can't. I know, I know, <laughs> that's, I know. We're not well, supposed to, we're not well, that, supposed to that can to be, be the argument that we make to the council, even if it's not. Yeah. No, but, but I think, so moving forward, the steps would be, if you could add that information as a column and maybe, Marilyn is requesting that we, in Map One version four, we use the pairing that I also does. So we would have three maps. That that's like the option A, option B, or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we're saying map for... three version one. Mm -hmm. With that, with, that Tracy was going to tweak that with the two with the two versions of map one ver I'm sorry with map one version four we would want to show the the current um precinct pairs mm -hmm. just like by the numbers and yep. then and also this version I right. think that was the suggestion and then on the other map the map three I I it fixed a little olive section and things that I mean it sounds like going forward like our best map is probably the map one version four, like one version of it, but I'm happy to take a look at map three. I mean, it is a much more significant change, yeah. you know, in terms, so. But um, I think I, I would, if we could print them as soon as possible and display them uh, and share it, um, that would be great. But I would like to, I would, I'll try to adjust the map three before we print it. Can you do yes, it by please. tomorrow? <laughs> I just try um, to address the protrusion things, but I mean, other Mike and others have brought up the issues with it, but, but it okay. would, it would be helpful to just see it with the voter numbers. Yeah. yeah. So Mike, once you have that, you have been compiling the information. Once you have that, it's easier to make it with the layers, with the census block. Yeah, um, it's going okay. to be interesting. <laughs> well, um, so I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work out. I'm close. I'm close. I'm not I'm not there yet. Otherwise, it have been would have been published. So there's a couple of places in town where data where the voter data is is very strange. So I'm trying to figure those those places out. So okay. I mean, I I will say just in general, like I know that. Um, just from somebody who's worked at the polls, right? Like some of the apartment complexes, is that what you're referring to? Because their their addresses and things can be pretty weird. The addresses it, are it very can be strange. Hard, yeah. And it can oh. be hard and it can be hard to geocode them because Correct. Exactly. Um, because some cases it's like one street address for the whole complex. And some cases there's different street addresses for yes. different buildings in the complex and yeah, like Mill Hollow. And stuff is yeah, sorted Mike, in different sorted in different ways. I mean Sue knows, but yeah, it's right. complicated to yeah. try to find people. <laughs> right. Well, let so, me know Mike the oddball ones and I'll look them up for you and tell you where they belong. Oh I I I know where they all are, but I had to like I did like 9,300 and whatever programmatically, but then the other 700 it, I had to look at in chunks and kind of go through those. And there's still a few outliers that I can't figure out that I'm pretty close on. Um, but then it's taking that data, taking those those locations and then kind of summarizing them by census block 
where things get pro get problematic. Right. Oh no, sure. Um, it's, it sounds really complicated. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, uh, it's it's very close, but um, so one thing we should think, of, and I know we're running out of time, but if we're wanting to post these at libraries, are we talking all libraries? Are we talking just the one in the center of town? And then what should we print on the maps? Because we don't really, in town hall, Sue and I, we don't really have any communication with the libraries or their staff at all. So um, in a I'm concerned about people going up to library staff and making comments and stuff. You know, we can print things and put it all over the map, but I'll, people don't read. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess one thing is if people are going to town hall, I mean, the Jones, the Jones library is so close to town hall. Like it's literally like two blocks away. I, oh. I think it might make sense just to have it at town hall. I, but I think I just thought I think if it Jones was just a library a lot more traffic, it gets a yeah. lot more traffic at the Jones. True. Yeah. Um, we could just have a big sign. If you have any questions, ask the town clerk or something. Well, that's call, anybody want to call Tracy's cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> call Mike's cell phone. <laughs> OK, can we make us one page saying yes. a title saying a proposed working draft for um, district in enamored space on 2020 census. Um, comments to town clerk with subject line DAB. And so would somebody would need to reach out to like Sharon Shari or the. Yeah, we will. We will. Okay. I'll but I would, say, I, I would say we can put, put four, them as. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Put them small with that letter and that's it. Uh, it's not that we can make a folder and things, but if we, um, they have a bulletin board at the entrance. I don't know if they would let us post it there. Marilyn, you have a comment? You're muted. Marilyn, you're, you're muted. In the interest of time, I just wanted yeah. to say that um, I I did take a stab at the 20, 2011 draft of the report, and it's it's I made the changes that I could, and I highlighted what I did, and it is in I think there's a I forget what folder it's in, but it's yeah. it's in the folder if anyone's seen. Okay, it. so let's I think let's wrap up the 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 map, Mike the the action item since Mike is going to try to put the information and we the goal would be to try to have them printed by Thursday. You think it's possible? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. And then regarding the next item is timeline and the next steps and thanks Merlin for bringing up about the report and the work. Um, because I think it's coming close that we have two weeks to write the report. I would ask everybody um, to look at what Marilyn has done because the idea, I would like to start writing the report next time while we are here, but it would be great if, I don't know if people want to take some ownership on some areas on, uh, on the narrative um, while we are finalizing the discussion on the precincts um, and try to start replacing parts of the document. Marlene, you have a suggestion? How to proceed? I, I think Tracy said that she would pull up the documents, any kind of correspondence we had and, and try to post that as well. I haven't seen that. Okay. And we could just incorporate that. Or I mean, I had a few, I mean, I had, I don't know if we need to, do we need to provide much explanation about 10 precincts versus 15. I know that I had no. some like notes on that. No, but, I think I mean, we probably just need the correspondence to say that this is what okay. we decided on. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that the population, the facts are, and then the population and and so then Mike, before you were um present at the meeting, we were we were talking about incorporating it looked like the 2011 version of the report. It, I'm not sure that it included any maps besides the required precinct map. Um, we were talking about a like, map that you had done like early on about the census block density, uh -huh. like into the um, 
official report that we give to the sure. council and the state. And um, I do have some suggestions like for edits of it, just to like- Absolutely. Clear it up. Yeah, okay. yeah you can but, just email those. You can email those to me and I'll okay. slowly chip away at it. But just just because I thought the graphics would be really helpful okay. to add. Okay. Um, and and then also I will, um, so I will send tomorrow, I'll send like an, a changes if we want to continue to show the map three that I'll send like some updates to it to try to address the concerns that were. But we are not changing map one version four at all, correct? No. no. Okay, but there are slight changes to map three version one that you're going to be making yeah. and yes. getting, and the getting to me before midnight tonight. I don't know about that. <laughs> it takes a long time. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But the um for for map one whatever map maybe we need to call them a different name at some point or sure. something yeah. like map A and map B or something. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's it's confusing. Okay. Um, but for the map one version four, that we did talk about right having two versions printed with different precinct pairs. Yep. Okay. Correct. Yep. Okay. I am doing that. All right. Yep. Great. Okay. Okay. So. I'm looking at for the timeline and the version of the report. I'm looking at uh, what Marilyn highlighted on the text. Uh, and I'm wondering if somebody wants to st start taking a stab. So Marilyn highlighted the areas that she considers that they need to be changed. And whether we create a, somebody wants to start writing. Um, I mean, the report is pretty short, right? Like when I've looked at it, it's just yeah. a few pages long. Yeah. Um, but I, again, before we submit, we need to go through a revision. So ideally, no, of course, of course. I think there's a, a lot of the narrative that we can have ready by next meeting if we have a volunteer. Uh, um, so then we can start because we need to correct it before we submit it to the, to the town council. The next meeting is October. Is uh, the fourth, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then, and then, so next week between and then on the twelfth, we might make some correction. But that's what we are submitting to the town council. So uh, we I, we need we might need to do some corrections. Sorry. So I just have a question moving forward. So I know you know both um, like in our criteria and in our discussions, we've talked about the data related to um race and disenfranchised populations and things like that and we haven't really looked that much of it so i know peggy looked at that when she was analyzing her map too but we did haven't really looked at that with they are I, somewhat limited you know just in terms of all of our boundaries and so on but is that something that we want to try to look at a little more before the next meeting i do i do think that there could be questions about it so I can take a stab at looking at some of that. Okay, if you can take a look, I think um, by my recollection, uh, if you look at the layers uh, that Mike created, um, there are several, there are at least three or four areas of high density of minorities. One is on colonial, uh, colonial village and some parts of Echo Hill. Um, the other one is, is Hadley Road. The other one is the dorms. Right. And another one in North Amherst. Um, and I think most of these, I might be wrong, but I think most both maps, I think they keep um, all these areas together. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think, I think the maps do a good job. Yeah, we haven't. We've tried our best to not split up neighborhoods. Okay, so but. on the interest of time, um, I could. We don't have PDF version. I could try changing. I'll start working on the on the document. But if anybody else wants to write some other narrative or some section that considers that would be helpful, please post it, and then we can incorporate it in without making comments, <coughs> okay? I won't be able to tackle this until the weekend, um, until Sunday, so, but if somebody wants to get started, go ahead. Really? I just wanted to, I wanted to explain the highlighting in the document that I did. 
So anything that was in blue were changes that I made on the doc exist in the 2011 document and the highlighting in yellow was information that's no longer relevant. Okay. And okay. Um, Marilyn, this is a PDF. You have a Word document or? I thought I sent it as a Word document. To okay. See. Okay. She posted that PDF. It's a good. Okay. What happens is I think when it gets posted, a lot of times it converts to a PDF. So could you maybe send us a Word version? I, I probably already have it outside so. of the package. Yeah, so, can, can you send it outside the package? So if somebody wants to write a section, um, then we can merge the different areas. But I would say um, if somebody decides to work in a particular area, do let us know so that we don't duplicate the work. OK, so, so <laughs> what do you want me to do with it? So send the, the Word document to everybody. And, oh, OK, OK. And then if any member decides to work on a particular area uh, so that we don't duplicate the work, let the rest of the people without commenting, we cannot comment, it says just inform, I'm gonna be writing at this section or working on this section. So then Good. we don't duplicate the work. Good. Okay. Okay, so, um, Maybe I should assign people, but I think it should be more affine to your interest. So, you to... Irene yes. and Peggy, I'd be um, willing to proofread anything you would, you know, if if you would need someone to, to just read over at drafts, okay? We love it. Great. Thank you. All right, yes. just, yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, great. Thank you, Dee. So, uh, that's... Um, the next steps, um, I don't have any item not anticipated in before. Uh, anybody has something that is hanging? No? Mm -hmm. So we have nine time for uh, public comment and I see that attendee just raised the hand and then lower, yes. Okay, Freddie, I brought you in the room. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Uh, just as a, as a closer, could you give me the numbers of the maps once again, because I realized I didn't write them down all that time. And now it's, <laughs> so it's, it's number uh, three, one. Map, 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 map three, version one. Three. And, and map one, version four, or what one, we're looking no, for. No, map, yeah. Thank you. And that's what's going to the town, to the library. Yes. Uh, in principle, we have secured the town hall. We want to try to get it to the library. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. Well, and the new versions will go into the packet, right? Like into Correct. next week's packet once yeah. they're ready. So yeah. So it's always best, um, Freddie, to look at the like the most up to date packet because that's where the most up to date maps that are still being considered is. Don't look at the other the older packets because that's kind of our working our working right. history and there's just yeah. so many different versions of things you're gonna. But but I think that's what we tell the council. We tell the council that there were many maps. Yeah. So. I think in the report here in the last <laughs> map they said there were seven maps. I think we can. Seven. Count I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's in one day. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I just I just want to say something um, before we log off. Um, so we have a meeting scheduled, I believe, the day before the council meeting on October 13th, correct? Yes. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Like that's just kind of making sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed, right? Yeah, okay. that's why we need to work on the report between okay. well, now and next meeting because that, next meeting we need to discuss whatever we have written and right vote on one map like, well, so that's, we, that's not sorry, enough time it's just not enough time for me to turn around anything no no, no uh, so, so, so i just wanted to make sure that expectation was set so so <laughs> no so the idea is that next week we at the beginning of the meeting we're going to vote on one of the meetings on one of the maps mm -hmm. And that's and then the, we're gonna have to spend the rest of the meeting working on the report and crossing 
and then we have one more meeting to finalize the report. But well, they, <coughs> is that meeting on the 12th or the 13th? So, the, it's, so, it's actually the council isn't meeting though, right? The council no, isn't meeting on the 13th. No. The deadline for us to submit our material oh, okay. is the 13th, 13th for the meeting. Yes. So the meet on the 18th, we have a deadline on the 13th to submit to the council. To the council. We're meeting on the 12th. We're meeting on the we 12th. We meet on the 12th, right? Gotcha. So we might make, squeeze the meeting so that we have time before um, deadline. But the idea would be so that the timeline would be that we have to uh, we're gonna have to vote on a map at the beginning of the meeting and work on the document uh, that reflects uh, the map. I think yeah, we should think about the most efficient way to do that at a meeting because I don't think that editing in real time and creating but I don't know we, we could talk about the main points or something yeah Marlene I move we adjourn absolutely okay I, I second second, second. Okay. Marlene <laughs> yes uh Peggy Shannon yes Tracy Safian yes Joseph Gordon yes yeah yes so my meeting right. and turn all right, thank you. Thank you. See everyone. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Night. Bye.